Hello, I'm Chris from the RV Mobile Internet Resource Center here to show you an unboxing of a brand new product from WeBoost. This is the WeBoost Drive 4G XRV RV Signal Booster. So the um, WeBoost 4GX booster has been our top pick for quite a long time and it comes kind of packaged up for use on a car with a small 4-inch stubby antenna and a you know, kind of an indoor paddle antenna, more vehicle focused, um, still works really well in RVs. And then they've also come out with the 4GX OTR version, which comes packaged for truckers with a big, tall antenna um, designed to mount on a truck side mirror. A lot of RVers are taking advantage of that as well, but again, it's kind of hard to put a two foot tall antenna on top of an RV. So WeBoost has finally come out with a new kit intended for the RV market. And um, we've got the one of the very first ones. We're going to open it up and give you some first impressions. So let's take a look what they say on the box. 32X, better cellular coverage. I think they claim on all of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this is, a, as we understand it, it, is the exact same 4GX booster, just new pieces put together. And it's actually antennas that they've sold for the home, um, for their home installations as their outside antenna. And a desktop antenna was what they've also used um, in, I believe, the RV 4G kit that they've done before. So it's no new pieces, just a new package all put together for just $4.99. So a pretty good bundle price for a um, high-end powerful booster. Let's see what's in the box. card from them. Hey. And installation overview guide. Uh, need help, contact us directly. And we've gotten a lot of reports from a lot of people about getting really good support from WeBoost. So don't hesitate to call them if you think something's defective. Uh, if you think you've got a bad antenna, we've had Many people report that Weeboost has just sent them replacement parts, not even requesting to be paid for shipping. So if you've got problems, they have good support history. You got install box A and install box B. Start installation with this box for steps one, two, three, six, and eight, and then steps four, five, and seven. Looks like they've done a lot to simplify putting all the pieces together for an RVer. Let's see what's in box A. Wow, step one, step two, three, six, and eight. So it looks like step one is mount the outside antenna to a pole. So let's start with that. I'm not actually going to mount it right now, but let's just see what's in the box. So this is the 4G Omni building antenna, um, 75 ohm version. And one of the things I noticed when I saw the specs come out from WeBoost is their booster typically calls, the 4GX booster typically calls for 50 ohm boosters, uh, 50 ohm antennas. And this is a 75 ohm one I saw on the specs and they're giving 75 ohm antenna cable. A lot of times that would um, lead to um, degradation of performance, but they say their booster is actually designed to work with 50 or 75 ohm antennas. So here is it's about the size of a hand tall um, antenna designed to mount to a ladder um, or some sort of place you could clamp this on. They've got their antenna installation guide, and it's basically could mount into a wall or to a pole. Probably to an RV ladder would be the best fit for that. And yeah, they've got pole mount clamps included. Now, again, this is an antenna that they've been selling before, nothing new. It's one that they've been selling as um, part of their home antenna setups for long range use in a home. Now it is put together in a new kit. And it is omnidirectional. It is omnidirectional. And, and again, this is also a, a, um, a, an omnidirectional antenna that needs to be installed vertically. You cannot install it sideways to get low profile. These antennas broadcast in a donut shape out from them. So if you've got it lying flat, your donut's not going where you want it to go. So it's got to stand up. 
And then on the bottom, it's got an F connector, which is something we don't see it too much on um, uh, a lot of antennas, but it lets you use the same sort of antenna wire that uh, cable TV or satellite TV systems often use. So you might be able to use some wires that you already have. Well, let's see what's in the box for, oh, there's two boxes in here. Oh, that was just a spacer, okay. Steps two, three, six, and eight. This is for the ins outside installation and power. It's definitely clear. Put the steps together. Wow, everything is labeled. Step six, step two and three. So drill a hole where you want the cable to go into your RV. Um, we'd probably, if you can, go in through an existing hole, like a refrigerator vent or uh, open conduit space and then you've got the F connector on one end and I believe this is supposed to be 20 feet of cable here you have 20 feet of cable to go from your outside to your inside so, um, RG set RG6 coax the same kind that a lot of cable TV systems or, or satellites would use and then on the end looks like they've got an adapter already mounted on the cable so it's just generic F cable, RJ6 cable, and then they've got a adapter to go to the SMA end that will plug into the boosters. So the boosters get just a regular WeBoost booster with the SMA end like that on it. So 20 feet of cable, put a hole, bring it inside, and then now we've got two, three, six. Looks like they've given us a two different um, power supplies. There's a a uh, 12 volt system with no on off switch if you want to um, plug it into. Uh, let's see how that ends on this. So, if you've got, ah, yeah, here's a little fuse box and wires. So, if you want to wire this directly into your RV 12 volt power system, you've got a 12 volt power supply right there. And then they have an AC power supply. So, you've got two choices to power it. Uh, they don't include the cigarette lighter power supply that they've normally included with the um, 4GX booster before, but you've got two other ways to power it here. Um, yep, so 110 or 12 volts. And then here also in this box, we've got, uh, looks like they're including the zip ties and cable mounts and even a little cable entry cover to go through um, putting a hole in the side of your RV and then sealing it up again. So it really is a complete kit um, if you need to drill a hole and put all the pieces together. It's a, quite a package there. So let's see what's in the other box, install box B. Steps four and five and step seven here. So steps four and five seem to be where to mount the booster. Determine where you want to mount the booster and put a mounting bracket in place. And Getting surrounded by boxes here. There's a lot of pieces. This is the 4GX booster. It feels exactly like the ones we've seen before. This has been our top pick booster for a while now. Um, it has hookup for the inside antenna there, outside antenna there, and the power supply there. And that's basically it. And it has just a single status light. Green, you're good. Uh, flashing, you're getting a little bit of uh, power droppage, and if it turns red, then um, you've gone into oscillation and you need more separation or the boost, you're someplace where the booster really isn't helping you. You probably can get by without it. Now, this is box seven. This is going to be the inside antenna. It looks like just a spacer down there again. So this is the inside antenna. It's got 13 feet of cable on it, it says. And, and 
here we go. This is a little desktop antenna. So this would, um, you could either put this antenna inside of your tech cabinet and it would give coverage to everything there. Or if you've got a desk area in your RV that you work at and you would have your hotspot and send your phones at, you can wire this down and uh, set this on your desk like that. Maybe put a little bit of museum putty on it to, under it to hold it stable. Um, and it seems like it's actually a SMA cable with a little adapter short end here, so easier to run the cable. Um, now this is a directional antenna, they've told us. This has got basically a 120 degree beam out of it. So anything you want boosted has to be kind of in the pie shaped wedge in front of this little desktop antenna. What is the range they're claiming? I believe they're claiming uh, three to six feet, but basically focus focus on what's right up in front of this. Yeah, it's again all of our experience with boosters is um, the closer you are to this, the better performance you'll have, particularly with upload speeds. Upload drops off dramatically as you get away from the inside antenna, so if you're doing any sort of upload work. Have your hotspot, have your phone sitting as close to this um, inside antenna as possible. Um, That's a lot of boxes you just unboxed. <laughs> That's a lot. This is our most boxes in an unboxing ever. Um, and yeah, there's the manual. And looks like it just kind of goes over the steps that were illustrated. Yeah, drill with a drill a one inch hole in the side of your RV, mount your antenna. Um, you know, again, they include everything you could possibly need to install this kit um, for our RVs. And what do they suggest? Uh, yeah. What kind of signals you might get? A little bit of guidance here. Solid green is good. Blinking red then solid green is uh, bad. Solid red is very bad. And um, yeah, an overall quite. Uh, well put together kit. Now, does it make sense to go with this full RV kit or just stick with the basic stubby antennas, which we know a lot of our viewers have been successful with, or the 4GX OTR trucker? Now you've got three different options to work with our favorite booster available in kit form, and we'll do what we can to see how, how they compare to each other, the different setups. Yeah.